All right, guys, I'm Nicolette. And today we are talking about a mother's strength and particularly those mothers of sons. Um, and I'm joined by a real inspiration, Lori Livingston. She is, um, all right. So maybe, maybe you're used to seeing her as uh, the FBI scroll agent in Captain Marvel in WandaVision, but you know, she's way more than that. She's, um, a mother of a son. And so I really wanted to take time to talk to her today. And Lori started her career as a model, right? But she's always stayed true to her inner self and believed that others would see the value in that too. And today, you know, Fast forward to today, she's got a fashion line, an inspiring book about beauty for young people, um, and a ton of wonderful things in the works uh, that she's going to share with the world. But um, the reason we're here is to talk about momhood. And, and as a lot of moms say, this is probably one of our greatest achievements. So um, today, I'd like to discuss the term strong mother, what that really means, how strong mothers raise strong and respectful sons. And I'd like to dive deep into the bond between a mother and son and how that evolves over time. So Lori, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I am super excited to have you. Nicolette, wow, what an introduction, my goodness. <laughs> wow, thank you. I am inspired, Lori, so I really do appreciate your time. Thank you, I'm glad to be here on your show. This is awesome. This is awesome and necessary. And necessary. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I really want to kick off with this quote that I, I found. And you shared a quote with me last week when we were chatting. And I was thinking about other quotes that were pertinent. And there's this quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson, and it says, men are what their mothers made them. Now, I, I mean, yeah, it's true. Any parent has an influence on their child, right? But um, I think there's something special about that mother-son bond. So I, I wanted to start with that, Lori. How important do you think that relationship is, you know, how has that played in your relationship with your son? And please tell us a little bit about you and your son as well. Absolutely. Um, I, I have to speak from, from the black community perspective, and this may ruffle some feathers a little bit, but you know what, we're, that's what I do sometimes. So, <laughs> um, being a mother in the black community has, in my opinion, has caused a lot of and here's where the feathers are going to get ruffled. It, it's caused a lot of issues that I think we deal with in our community in terms of with our men, the way they treat us as they get older, uh, like the way we date them and things that we go through with them once they kind of evolve and get older and everything. And I think it all stems back to the way their mother treated them. In the Black community, we are taught to overtly indulge and love and just give to our sons and just, you know, give them the world and just, you know, praise and kisses. And, you know, not so much the women, you know, give the girls a little bit of a harder way to go, you know, kind of, they have to know they should get it. They, you know, and, and what it's created, what I've learned, what it's created is a, a society in my community, a society of selfish men who want a mother in a woman. Can I stop you right there? Because as you're talking, this sounds, and now I'm of Italian ancestry, and it sounds very much like the Italian community too, because I mean, I think about uh, sons, Italian mothers and their sons, and my great grandmother, you could not tell her anything about her son, but her daughter was expected to be a woman, take care of everything, take care of her and her son. But I mean, at 4 PM every day, she was waiting by the phone for her son, her son, you know, and it's, it's the, there are, especially if you think back to all those mafioso stereotypes, those are all those, you know, the mothers, they protect their son and, and, they're all selfish men. You're right. I see and a lot of parallel. Yeah. Created a society of women who are complaining and having difficulties with these men. And we're looking at the men like, get it together, fix it, do this. What is wrong with you? You know, we're looking at them that way and we're not looking at the root of it. And the root of it goes back to the very first woman that they will ever encounter in their lives, which is who? Us. It's us. So going into that, I had, when I was married, I was married to a man who was very similar. His mother, I mean, she practically breastfed him as an adult. I mean, she, he, he, he was, you know, he was a child, but he was a grown man, <laughs> wife, 
grow and, and a son of his own. You know, it's like he's grown. Let him go. But she just refused to, you know, allow this man to grow up. And then she looked at me like I was just, you know, Satan himself, because why don't you do to him like I do to him, too? You know, <laughs> and ultimately he ended up divorced. I wonder why. But, you know, he ended up divorced. And, you know, it's like she's not scratching her well she's passed away rest her soul but she was scratching her head for a while there's i don't understand you know this i have my son back and he's just not this he's this great guy to me but he's not a great guy to all these women and why aren't you doting up you know and and i learned by watching their dynamic what not to do with my own son with my own son because if my son comes back to me and he's married and his wife is looking at me like i hate you i have to take responsibility somewhere in there Mm -hmm. I have to look at that myself and say, what did I create? You know, what did I do in his psychology of thinking in terms of how to treat women? What part did I play in that? Right. So I took that very personally with, with raising my son, you know, even now, like when, when I would see him date and he's, he, for the most, he's very good with women that I know of. I I've seen really good, <laughs> but I've seen cases where he's done things uh, with a girl. And I'm just like, did I teach you that? Right. Did I? And, you know, and he would quick, quickly correct me. No. And I'm like, well, why are you doing that? <laughs> you know? Or like if he, if, if I would see him in something with a girl, of course, rare cases, and I would, I would say otherwise, rare cases, I would quickly, you know, assess, would you want someone to treat me that way? Right. Are you okay with, with what you're doing right now? You know, so we as mothers, we have such a, a, we have such power in our hands and society doesn't give us enough opportunity i feel to to use that power when it comes to having our boys and really having time with them not to just nurture and care because that's what we do instinctively if, if an animal comes our way what are we going to do we're going to nurture and care if puppies come our way we're going to nurture and care you know mm -hmm. that's just what we we can't help that but the part where we cultivate them and help them our input our input yes they say a man makes a man yes but a woman does too yes i think more so yes a woman does too because she's teaching him how to deal with the opposite sex mm -hmm. first so i took that very person i hope i'm still answering the question because i know i went off on a tip <laughs> but i like i took it very personally with raising my son i took it extremely personally I will not be responsible for this man destroying the lives of women mm -hmm. because he has to do with me. Right. Or because I, I did something in, in his developmental stage of growing up. I will not, I can't, I can't do that. I can't just unleash this, this man out into the world and just sit back and look at every woman. Like, oh, it's <laughs> oh my your God. problem now. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, so I, I, I can't, I can't respect. And I think more women, more mothers definitely need to do that. Um, growing, my son, you have a question, uh, he, Lori, about something you asked, uh, you said earlier, and, you know, we're, we're looking at the mother that first it was the mother that, um, overly nurturing. Right. And we talked about, about, <laughs> about your, uh, ex-husband and, and that bond and that kind of bond, but what about the opposite bond? And I, I can think of a few men that I know whose mothers were a lot harder on them. And, and, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to bring up nationalities, right? I don't want to discriminate, but I'm thinking about, cause you were talking about the black community and I was talking about the Italian community, right? And I can see a lot of parallels there, but there are some colder nationalities out there that are not quite as loving in, you know, stereotypically. So those, I do believe they're a little bit tougher on their, on their boys and kind of cold and not as, as, you know, and I know a lot of men like that and that must also have a rough impact because now you've got someone who's like coddled and then you've got someone who's just cut off. Hey, yeah, yeah. you're good. <laughs> go, go live. Go survive. Yeah. Yep. I, I think those type of guys are, are equally, um, dangerous, mm -hmm. equally dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think when, when you have a mother who's the opposite, that's very narcissistic in a sense mm -hmm. in, in no, I'm no, you know, psychiatrist, I don't diagnose, <laughs> but it, it has that that tendency to be narcissistic because we as women are natural nurturers. We we can't help ourselves. Can't. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But to have a woman who just pushes off a child like that, oh, just learn, grow up, be a man. Yes. There's there's something wrong there, and I think that also creates in men to become hate. They, that's what caused them to hate women. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of women, a lot of a lot of sociopaths, mm 
that have gone on to kill women, serial killers that have gone on to kill women. You stem that back. If you go back in their history, you go back mm -hmm. in there psychologically, it goes back to mom. Yeah. It goes back to mommy wounds. It goes back to what did my mother do? There was a, a murderer and I don't know specifically. I just remember the story. There was a murderer. He, he, he killed someone and he hated his mother as a result. So he like treated, I think he like went after women who resembled his mother. Or right, were, right. I watch a lot of law and order too. I've got, I, I'm up oh, on yeah. that. <laughs> All the time. But I don't, I think this is something, I, I think we as a society, we, we hail women, we hail mom as we put mom up on this pedestal. Mm -hmm. Like she's great. She's wonderful. And, and great. We deserve it. We, we mm -hmm. give birth. To, you know, we're the ones, our bodies are doing all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. to bring children. <laughs> but they, they, they do it to a fault where they don't hold us as mothers accountable when it comes to a lot of the damage that has been done to these children as well. Because think about it, we're brutal on husbands. We're brutal on <laughs> men. True. Come on, we're brutal. We're brutal on the man. And I'm, I'm not bashing moms. I'm not bashing mm -hmm. women. I'm not, we're brutal on the, on the dad. You know, well, dad wasn't there. And, you know, and, right. and just a horrible dad. And he was just, you know, and when it comes to mom, have you noticed when you try to speak up, say, hey, my mom was, wasn't so great. Oh, you better not say that. That's your mother. You bet. That's true. That's true. And they're very, they don't allow that to happen. They don't allow that to be discussed. They don't allow that to be a thing that we deal with. I think maybe now more than ever before that I've seen, but we as mothers have to take responsibilities with our children. The world, we don't, our sons, our sons are not God's gift to the world in, in the sense, in the sense yes. that, that that we have done. I know There's, what you mean. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Women should not feel grateful because your son it fell in love with her because that's your son. <laughs> no, <laughs> we have a responsibility to make him a great man. That's right. We have a responsibility to make him a responsible man, to make him responsible and how he treats other women and how he treats other people in mm -hmm. general. We have to take responsibility. Why? Because we are the ones spending, in most cases, we are the ones spending the most time with them. Right. That's right. I've never from actually heard it from this perspective. You know, mother's accountability, that is so important. We you really know, don't talk about that enough. We can't. We can't. I mean, I, I've heard it time and time again. If you start to mention any, well, that's your mother. You better love her. Come on. And sometimes I say that too. I birthed you. You just deal with it. You know, you get what you get. Yeah. yeah. I'm guilty of that, right? We're flawed. We're flawed. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm flawed. You know, I've made mistakes. Uh, a part of my story is like, you know, I was homeless for a while. My son, my son and I, we were homeless after his cancer. You know, I couldn't, I just couldn't keep up with the demands. You know, the, the, if you've ever dealt with cancer, Cancer is extremely exp well, you know, expensive. You know, you're paying for fifteen hundred dollars for medication, and then the the doctor visits and the right. the scans and this scan and that scan and the biopsies and the all oh, that. You know, and you're just like, geez, this is a mortgage. You know, right. on top of mortgage, on top of your right. life. You know, and we ended up homeless. And I remember just feeling like I failed my son. I felt like you know I let him down. I felt like you know I'm supposed to know better. I, I didn't put all my eggs in a basket of his dad has to come to the rescue or, you know, some man, maybe I, that would be great. But until that day comes, guess who has to do the job? Me, right. you know? So I, I just did what I could and I worked with what I had. I am flawed. I do have issues. And I think that's one of the things I try to show my son is look, I'm not perfect. I'm not, I make mistakes. I apologize to him when I hurt his feelings, especially when we find out. Cause sometimes mm -hmm. we don't, sometimes okay. we aren't, no, you know, and I'm, I'm not judging any woman. If you don't do this, you know, you handle your circumstances, you know, equivalent to what you're, you're dealing with. But like, I have to take the responsibility for this human being mm -hmm. that I brought into this world. Mm -hmm. I brought him, he didn't ask me. He didn't see, he, he didn't knock my ovaries and say, Hey, mm -hmm. come on, sister, let's get it together. You know, no, yeah. I, I made that choice. I did that. So I am responsible not only for his well-being, for his life, I'm responsible for him to be a good person to other people. Right. And I have to take that seriously. And I do. So I tried and I'm not perfect by any means. I make mistakes. I've made tons of mistakes. Trust me, I've made them all. Ask me and I will give you the list. Like, <laughs> out. You know? we, don't, we don't have time, Larry. <laughs> but I, I've always been authentic. That's the best thing I can give my son. And I let him know, you know, Look, I mean, I, I don't have all the answers. 
I don't, I don't get it all the time. Yes, I made mistakes. Look, I did these things. I did these wrong. That's why I don't want you to make these same mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you do, I'll be there with you. I got your back. But I tried to tell you, you know, I tried to <laughs> warn you. I'll be, you know, something, you know. Um, I, le I like the fact that my son got to see in my career specifically that it wasn't all roses. Right. It, now he's a model. Now he's an actor. So I, I love the fact that he got to see me struggle and fight to get the roles and then the nose and the, the, you know, the rejection mm -hmm. and the turn. And then also the accolades and the success. I, I'm so glad he got to see everything. And he got to see me struggle. He got to see me, you know, working hard and, and you know, yeah, I'm, I'm on this national show over here, but we barely have any food in the house or, you know, whatever right. Right. Is years past, you know, I, I'm glad he got to see that because he can appreciate my mother worked her butt off. Right. And, and I, I want to talk about that, actually, because I think where you're going with this is really that strength and how hard, you know, that, that belief you had in yourself, which we've talked about, you know, back when you were on the insomnia catch show. And, and I really wanted to just touch on that time. Um, when you brought up your son, your son's fight with cancer and, and thank God he is, um, where he is now. Right. And, um, and you talked about the circumstances, right. Live it, being homeless. And I was wondering, um, as I was preparing for this, if you had ever spoken to him about that time and, I kind of wanted to know because maybe it would give me some insight into what this seven-year-old is maybe thinking, because, you know, sometimes, you know, our children are intuitive. I, I know that, but um, yeah. I think that they see us as superheroes um, when we're really not feeling like superheroes. So I guess my question is, um, you know, when you talk to him, if you talk to him about that time, how did he, like, what was it through his eyes? You know, I, I guess, what was he seeing? At the time, I know for a fact he saw, you know, failure. Why can't you get it together? You know, what is this? Like, why, why are we in our car? Like, come on. Uh, a part of him, of course, was ecstatic that he was no longer doing the chemotherapy and all those things. But at the same time, we're sleeping in our car, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I, I think he just kind of, you know, bit the bullet like we both did and just kind of endured. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I did the best I could with what we had. Uh, mm -hmm. There were times where all we had to afford at the day was peanut butter. You know, mm -hmm. that was it. Like we had no money for nothing else. There were times if things were really good, we could get bananas, you know, for the day or, you know, or chicken or something, you know, we could buy like fried chicken or something like that. But like uh, uh, most of the time we didn't have much to, to eat. And I think he just endured that. It's funny that we are bringing this up right now because recently I did an interview in my hometown and my hometown kind of discovered, hey, that girl that was in WandaVision is from here. You know, so they, yeah, they're like, oh my gosh, you're from here. Oh my God, where'd she come from? <laughs> we're, we're doing, they've been doing an interview and running the story and I told them about the homeless part. And of course, that my son had to face a lot of his home, you know, his friends from home mm -hmm. and, and those tough questions. And it brought us back full circle now because things have changed. We are doing much better, you know, so I, it brought us full circle. And he said to me, you know, I wasn't ready to talk about that. I wasn't ready to, to expose that. I wanted to hide that. I wanted to cover that. I wanted to, to never expose that to anybody. I wanted it to be our little secret. It, it definitely bonded us together because we weren't just mother and son out there. We were human beings out there surviving. Mm -hmm. You know, we were two people, um, you know, protecting each other in the middle of the night when people will come tapping on our window or just dangerous circumstances, dangerous places that we had to go together. You know, we it, it formed us to have a tighter bond because we both endured something very, very dark. So I remember him saying to me recently, you know, I, I didn't want to tell that story. I didn't want to talk about that. And I said, well, Devin, you know, it's out there now. His name is Devin. I said, uh, it's out there now, you know, and, and it needed to be said. I, I'm not going to live my life pretending like everything's perfect because I'm not. I'm not going to live my life uh, using to show people the truth. You know, everybody fun, though, if everything's perfect. I mean, is that really even a story? How do you even inspire anyone when everything is perfect <laughs> to maintain let's just be honest like like if nothing else it is hard to maintain perfection mm -hmm. or 
keeping up with that. It's hard to maintain that because at some point you're not going to feel like it. At some point you're going to be exhausted, tired, you know, a bad day, whatever. But you, it, it, maybe the truth will come out. I don't know. But I, I couldn't live. A facade. I can't live a facade. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I maintain that with my child, with my career, with everything. I'm, I'm very look, this is me. I'm honest. Right. And I my son. And he saw that. And, you know, I really think that it's um, I think we've shifted from just do as I say, right. Do as I say, I'm the parent, do it. And that's that um, to kind of acknowledging that we better lead by example. So if you want your son to, to do all of those things and overcome and, and, you know, you better show him that it's, that you can do it too. And, and this is for anything. I mean, we had a hard time. We were trying to stop cursing, you know, because, you know, we're like, all right, if we keep doing it, how's he going to know that it's wrong, you know? And I'm torn on that one because my parents dropped some F-bombs quite a few, but I knew, I knew that it was not acceptable for me. You know, I just, but yet then I got this one here and I know I'm going to profanities now, but really it was just, it was really hard and we're not doing too well with it, but we but my son knows not to say it when he gets to the school door. So that's a plus, <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. a win. <laughs> but that's awesome to me. You know, like I grew up in a very strict, it was like, you can't curse and you can't like, we weren't even allowed to say you're lying. We had to say, you're telling a story. You're, you're telling a fib, you know, you're not telling the truth. We could never say the word you're lying, you know, or anything like that. So for me, I would have really appreciated a mother like you. If I had, that. I would have appreciated that where my mom knew I was a human, you know, and as long as you're not like, I get it. If you do it around me, we'll deal with that together. But <laughs> it, it, just, just don't be out there in the streets. You know, <laughs> I, I expect the crap out of that. I, I wish, I wish we could do that, but you struck on something when there's a point in all of us and and i'm sure now that you just spoke about your parents you can look back and say i remember when my mom was like this and now being where you are today you have a greater appreciation for what mom and dad were doing yes flaws and all whatever mm -hmm. it was have a great okay our kids are going to one day do that about us they're gonna they're gonna one day get it i think they're so they're going to one day get it. They're going to one day be in our circumstances where they're trying to take care of kids and juggle this and juggle that and deal with everything. And they're going to go back to, they're going to revert back to somewhere, somewhere. They're going to revert back to what they saw us do. Mm -hmm. So I tried to lead that by example and show my son, you know, you're doing the same thing. You're showing him. You can only work with the tools you have. That's right. It's and, and I know a lot of people that are abusive tend to use that, that type of, well, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the, yeah. I mean, I'm the, the legit, I look, this is who I am. I'm flawed, but that, what is mine is yours. I got you. What do you need from me? I'm here mm -hmm. for you forever. I'm talking about that. And that's exactly what you are. That's what exactly what your viewers are. You know, th if you're listening to this, you have a genuine heart for how can I make this better? How can I be a better person? Not only to everybody, but especially to my kids that I'm presenting to this world. Mm -hmm. They're they be us men, girl or boy. I, how, come on, how many times? I'm turning into my mother. How many times? I really am, though. It's scary. How many times? <laughs> but our, ki our kids are going to say that about us. <laughs> you know, oh, my God, I'm my mom. Oh, my God, I'm my dad. Like, I just, oh, my, you know. So what are they, they going to do in those moments? Because they're going to revert back to what we did. And you know what? I'd rather my son re revert back to a, a mother who tried. Mm-hmm did her best you know I, i'd rather him revert back to you know uh, just being honest and open with himself and the circumstances in life than to if i if i were to just lay here in a ball right. and cry mm -hmm. rest all day and i'm not knocking anybody who does sometimes you need those days but i'm talking about if i never tried if i if i just gave up and just you know or or trying to be perfect because he saw his mom trying to be perfect at all right. times i would hate that and a lot of because parents do that too and that's where i also um you know, I was having a conversation with a woman last night who um, has an ex-husband who's an alcoholic. And, and so, you know, her old, one of her older sons is uh, 17. And so he wants to know things, but at the same time, she doesn't want to tell him because, you know, technically she's, it's not his weight to carry, but, but I feel like um, 
you know, there's a line between not sharing the information that you don't need to carry and being fake and saying, everything's fine. Everything's good. We're yeah. good. Everything's great. Yeah. Right. There's like this balance. Yeah. Yes. You spoke it eloquently the best. You said kids are resilient. That's right. They, through. they can see through. They know us. Mm -hmm. They are paying attention to us. Mm -hmm. But appropriate where they are mentally developmentally as children you know you, you i've seen parents where they're like dumping on their four-year-old oh my god and the poor right. four-year-old's mom you know trying to help and hold you know this kid is not developmentally prepared for that oh, you know mm -mm. seven-year-old you have to handle a seven-year-old at the level a seven-year-old can handle you have to handle a seven year old and it's now my son's 25 so he's a grown man i'm like look you're an adult now <laughs> <What are> you, <laughs> like all right yeah. no secret uh, we, we have to handle them appropriately. We have to handle them accordingly to their age. But be honest. You know, I can't tell you everything right now. You, mm -hmm. you don't know everything, but I can say we'll get through it. I can say, you know, uh, I, we're, we're doing what we can. I can say, I don't want you to worry about it. We're going to be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you need to talk to me, I'm here. If you need to talk to me, I'm right here. Age appropriate. Right. Exactly. You know, and you talked about, um, you know, looking back at your pair at your own parents. And I do believe in that gift of hindsight wholeheartedly, you know, um, but you built you've built that trust by being authentic with your son. Correct. And and so now how when you look back, is there anything that maybe you would have done differently in that department and how you how you handled the communication and the authenticity and, you know, was it too much? Was it not enough in some ways was, you know, you talked about age appropriate, um, like what I, I, and maybe I'm selfish in this. I, I'm really, I'd like the answer. <laughs> I, I had to grow up, you know, I wasn't always who I am today. I wasn't always mature. I had my own issues. I had my own things that I had to learn. And as I worked on me, I became a better version to work on anything else. But I also, especially now, knowing what I know now, I also try to go back as much as possible or whenever the, the circumstance comes up to deal with it, I go back and I face and deal with, between my son and I, whatever damage I caused because of my inexperience, because of my immaturity, you know, because of whatever I was going through, the phase I was going through in my life, who I was, you know. Um, when I started this journey as a professional model, I started out as a, as a professional model, so it caused me to have to be gone a lot. <clears throat> and, I, and I always cringe at this story, you know, because um, my son had to stay with my mother because his father and I were divorcing at the same time. So it was like my career took off. I'm going through a divorce, you know, and then we have this this at the time my son was seven, seven, eight years old, you know, and he was like stuck in the middle. You know, his dad just kind of ran off. And then I, of course, had to go because I'm now the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. I have to house. So I had to go. So I'm like traveling. I'm all over the place. And I remember having to leave him with my mother, which I knew he was safe as far as, you know, outwardly, I knew everything was safe, but I was so focused on the fact that he was safe that I didn't think about him. Right. You know, and, and how this must have affected him. And I would come home all the time and I would bring him gifts and I would do all these things from the road and all the stuff that I was doing. But then I'd have to go. And when I would have to leave, you know, I'd always try to cheer him up with a little song, little quirky, you know, little dance thing that we would do because it made me feel better. Yeah. It made me feel like, okay, I did my part. Mm -hmm. And then I would leave. And this, this seven-year-old, this eight-year-old was devastated because his mother was not there. Mm -hmm. And I think- but what could you really do? I mean, in reality, what could you have really done? You had to work at the same time. And I think about, you know, if you were a doctor or if you were like, I, I mean, I get it, but I'm so torn between, well, is it better to make the money for you to survive or, or, you know, like, I, I don't know, I get torn up about that myself and no, I'm not gone. But when I miss things or, you know, I'm just like, what do I do? What is my choice? You do what you have to do to support the family. Right. But when the time is right, you fix the damage that could have been caused in that time frame. Right. You know, 
And as they get older, they do understand it more themselves because now they're working. Now they're supporting their own families right. or the they're starting to get it a little bit like, okay, she wasn't abandoning me. She had to. There but, was no tree in the backyard. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's no tree. Oh my. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Exactly. But I was still responsible for the hurt that I caused that little boy, that little seven year old. I was responsible for that. Do you know? Yes, I was doing the best I could. Yes, I was working hard. Yes, I was busting my butt. Yes, I was here, there, and everywhere working to support us to keep a roof over our head as best as I could. But at the end of the day, he still needed his mom, you know? And mom couldn't be there. Mom had to leave. Mom had to go, come and go. So now I do what I can to make it, not, and not out of guilt. It's not out of guilt. It's, it's a genuine, I want to fix whatever mess I made on you. Right. And you just know. acknowledging that I think is yeah. more than a lot of mothers even do as the, yeah. as the kids get older and they're adults, I, I, I don't know any, <laughs> not that anybody just tells me, but not that I've ever heard of, you know, I mean, who comes back and actually deals with that, you know, later well, I started noticing he was, he was touchy. Like I started noticing my son was <clears throat> come and go. He was hit or miss, you mm-hmm. know, someday I love you mom. And, oh, you're so much. and then some days he's like, you know what? Not today with you. <laughs> And, and I knew, I knew I was at the root of that. Mm-hmm. I, what we endured was at the root of that. I knew uh, actions that I had done was at the root of that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I remember, I remember a friend of mine, uh, he said to me, he said, you know, and this is, this was at the core of my, my modeling career when I was traveling and my son was still young. He said to me, he said, you know, there's going to come a day where your son's probably going to hate you <laughs> because, because you weren't there. Exactly. And I remember thinking, what, why did you say that? <laughs> But he was right. He was right. He was speaking to me as a man who went through it with his mother. Right. And he was warning me. Mm-hmm. And he was 100% right. There came that day when my son got at this age where he was like, I, I need a moment from you. Just, you know? Yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't aggressively angry, right. but I, there was some anger. I knew that there, and I knew it was my responsibility to fix that. Now, my mother was never liked that. My mother was very, I'm mom, do what I say. And, and I, we, joke, we joke about that, but my mom took that to like the nth degree. Like she was just like, no, I, we don't talk. I'm perfect. I made no mistakes. La, 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 la. You know, like she, there was no talking to this woman. I did not give him that. Mm-hmm. No, knowing I had a part to play in the hurt he was, I could not give him that angry black woman. I refuse. Excuse me, sir. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I could not give him that. I couldn't, and I still won't. And the the best way that I led with it, not that I'm perfect, the best way I led with it was authenticity and mm-hmm. appropriating it with his age. I like that. I like that. I got to take that's notes. All that's all we can be is authentic. Yeah. I made mistakes. I don't know everything. And you know what? Take it or leave it here. I, I give it to you. I respect if you, I respect if you can accept it. I respect if you can't. But the only thing I can do, the only thing I can do, and this is this is for an, a grown son mm-hmm. that I, have, mm-hmm. the only thing I can do is be honest with you, right? About this, that's all I can do. Well, then you know, there were times where he needed a minute, right? And this is not exactly what I wanted to talk about, but it it is kind of reminding me of autonomy, right? And I'm thinking back from when he was a child. Now, sometimes um, allowing him, his space. Right. But also personal responsibility. We talk about the responsibility we have as mothers. Right. But it, it, and I think that when we take responsibility and they see that that helps with their personal responsibility. So I get that, but at the same time, right. We love, okay. We love the child unconditionally now. uh, Okay. How do we let them know we're here? We love you. I'm not going to be overly involved in everything you do. But also I really love you and I'm here, but I want to also protect you when it's age appropriate. I need to, but I also need to leave you space to fail. And it's just like, there's so many lines. <laughs> like, what, How do you do that? <laughs> I'm, again, I'm no expert. I'm no expert. I'm a woman who's made all the mistakes possible. Then you are I- the expert then. You're a mother who's <laughs> made mistakes. You are the expert. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
I, I, we say actions speak louder than any words we can say. And sometimes when you don't have the words to say, let your actions speak. And that's just being there for them. That's just being available. That's just, you know, continuing to love them the way that moms do. That's continuing to just support them in what they're doing. You know, sometimes we as moms have to step back and let them, mm -hmm. you know, engage, you know, and say, hey, you know, not right now, especially as they get older, not right now. And we have to respect that and just step back and say, I, res I respect your decision, you know, but I'm here. And it's continue. so hard, though. Even I'm thinking, because I'm that mom now, and he's only seven, who's like, what do you mean? What's wrong? Let's talk about it. Do you want to talk about it? No, mom, leave me alone. Mom, um, he likes to say, um, let's not talk about that. You know, no matter what it is, if it makes, if it's too heavy for him, let's not talk about it. But what do you do with that? But Nicolette, what do you do with that? When, when he says that, I try, well, most of the time I try to ask again in a different way. And then he just shuts it down. And, uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, all right. And then I got to wait for when the door opens, because what I notice is that there are times where he's more vulnerable than others, yeah. you know, and it's, it tends to be like, um, the strangest times. And sometimes I'm not <laughs> up for it, you know, but it's like, when I really want you to go to sleep um, because I'm exhausted, but you just want to stay up and chat all of a sudden out of nowhere for the first time in four months, you all of a sudden, and that's fine. You know, I got to take it when I can get it, but um, I got to sit with that for a while, you know? And then in the meantime, I'm like, well, if we're not talking about it, how do I know if something's going on? Because, you know, you're only seven and I should know these things. It's my job to make sure you're safe and, you know, like, but it's not my job. It's not my job really to know, if another seven-year-old said a mean thing, you know, I mean, honestly, what can I do? What am I going to beat him up? You know, what, what can I do? If you're not going to tell me, right. If you're going to tell me, there's really not much I could do, but if you did tell me, and this is what I tried to get across. If you did tell me, we could talk about it, right. We could, you know, we could talk about it in a way that maybe I could give you some tools or some good comebacks, right? For next time, I could, I could do something, right? Like give me an opportunity. But if you shut me down, when do I push? When do I not push? I don't know. I don't know. You listen when he's ready. And then keep waiting. Because that there shows him, that shows him that you're there. Mm -hmm. Step back, when you step back, you're, you're letting him have his boundary. You're letting him have his space within reason, of course, you know, of course. Right. He is seven years old, you know, um, you're, you're showing him, okay, I'm respecting your space and your boundaries. And you're stepping back. But when he opens up to you, that's because he trusts you at that moment mm -hmm. to open up to you. So what we can do at that moment is be fully on, fully right. available, fully engaged, be there and let them speak mm -hmm. because that's building trust. And I know we spoke on that before mm -hmm. and I, we have to build trust with them. They have to trust. It is imperative that my son trusts me. Why? Because you're saying right now at seven years old, you know, uh, what if someone hurt his feelings? Oh, honey, wait till they're 20, <laughs> wait till they're 25 and they have <laughs> wives. And you're looking at her like, I know you're not the best thing possible coming up in here, but I trust the relationship that I've built with my son thus far without stepping over the blind. You know, I have to trust that you're going to listen to me when I say she's not, she's not it, honey. <laughs> that friend is not your friend. You, right. you know what I mean? But it comes from all these, all these little moments that you're having right now. Mm -hmm. All of equity. All of this is equity in his little heart saying, no matter what, mom will always be there. And I don't, I don't care. And I learned this the hard way. I'm, I'm this, I'm speaking from experience for sure. When they're ready to open up, drop everything. How many times, how many times have, oh, honey, I got this phone call right now. I can't, I, mm -hmm. right. Um, it comes when you're like, now, <laughs> now you want to tire. Exactly. Drop everything and be there and listen, because that is building that foundation of trust 
and I learned this from experience. Even now, even at my son's 25 this month, he'll be 25. Praise God. He's happy 25. birthday to you. I always, I always wish moms a happy birthday when it's their kid's birthday. Ooh, really? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank I think you. We I deserve that. it. I love that. I love that. <laughs> 25. We made it to 25. Oh my gosh. Um, I, he, he's 25 and he still does that. Everything you're saying about your son, like there's time I just want to probe and I want to get in there. And I'm just like, come on, no, you know, and I had to step back and just wait. But then out of the blue, he wants to call me. And of course, I might be in the middle of something. And, and he's like, well, mom, I want to talk. And we did. I'm just like, ah! but I have to stop. I have to stop and just do it and listen. Why? Because he trusts me enough to come to me. Mm -hmm. That's big to them. Mm -hmm. Especially boys that's big to them yeah. they're not exactly not all of them are open books so they're, they're not open to everybody this doesn't happen everybody doesn't get this part of them so when they come to you be there be there and then don't tell a soul yes oh my god i am so happy you said that okay i've totally forgot about that yes. so Yes. So my mother, right. And she knows this. she loves to talk. She loves to talk, she talks to tell everybody, everything. And, uh, really it's all of my women relatives. I can't just, I can't just say it's her, but I, and I've been like that my whole life. And I started to learn a little something here when, um, my son would tell me, and he loves his father. Oh my God. If there is one of his favorite person in the whole world, it's daddy, daddy, daddy. Oh. Daddy is, is just like Jesus. But, um, <laughs> so daddy is like I said, Jesus, but, um, you know, he told me one day, um, don't tell dad. And it wasn't anything terrible. It was just, you know, something, it was actually something I thought he would have told his father and not me. Cause it was more of a boy thing. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I didn't, and, and there are times where there are times where I, I do, because, you know, he's my husband and he's, we need to raise him the same, but he's never repeats it to him. You know, he never, he needs to know what's going on so that he could properly parent. But he, I told him, you don't tell him, do not say a word. And we're on the same page about that. There are times where we've got to know things together, yeah. but I, I don't tell anybody the things he tells me. And he actually reminds me not to tell anyone, which is weird to me. Like, does he think I'm going to, does he think all I do is sh I never shut up? He's like, mom, all you do is talk. <laughs> That's all you do. He tells me. He's like, you never stop talking, mom. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. It's a problem. <laughs> I think it's, I think when he's saying that, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I think it's less of a mistrust and more of a, now remember, <laughs> I'm trusting you. That's right. Like his own way of kind of, yeah. you know, like, remember. I don't I, do I, this a lot, mom. So yeah. when I do. <laughs> in, in his own seven-year-old way, it's kind of like, okay, you promised, remember, you know, type of deal. I don't feel like it's, it's a jab at you. I think it's for his own. I think it's for his own, you know, to, you know, just like, okay, mm -hmm. said that to her and she, she trusts, I could trust her. She mm -hmm. didn't, you know, you're building, constantly building trust because you're going to need these. You're going to need this when they're teenagers. Yeah. I'm terrible. Gonna, trust me. Yes. You're going to need, like, I see, I see parents today and they have these little babies and everybody. I'm like, oh honey, you enjoy that now. And why you can, you know, call the shots because <laughs> when they get like 18, you know, and older, and they're going, they're sitting at the house like this. I can't say anything, you know, <laughs> I have to trust you. Have, that's when it turns into, I have to trust what I said, what I did was enough for this man, this woman now that I've created to know better. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've heard, you've heard kids tons of times say, Oh, I heard my mom. I was about to do something stupid. I heard my mom say, oh, you, that. you know, that, that, Equity. That was the equity that was built in that child. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing right now. You're cultivating trust in your son. I trust my mom. Yes, she might talk to everybody. You know, she might do, but you know what? She didn't tell my she didn't tell my she kept my secret secret. Right. That means the world to them. That means right. the world to them. It does. 
and it, it, there's no formula. You know, we, we didn't come with instructions when these babies came, you know, we, they're not like doll babies. They have little instructions that tell you how to do this with the toy. You know, mm-hmm. it came with nothing, you know, and what did we do? We were winging it. We were doing the best we could, you know, trying to keep them alive, you know, and, and it's out of that. Right. I got one job, kid, and it's to keep you alive. So you <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't kill you. So we're good. And I can say that in, in a bad way. Like I should have, you know, but I'm saying for, I didn't make any mistakes that, that cost you your life. You know, I'm just, I'm doing something good. Work with me, work with me, you know? So I just, you're all you can do. All you can do is what you can, what you have. And that's in anything. Mm-hmm. Just like your best right now, you're working with what you have. That's right. Yeah. You're doing the same with your child and you have to give yourself that much credit as a parent. You have to, you have to, because it, because it, you're, you're the one that needs the pep talk sometimes too, even if it's coming from just you, as they get older, those pep talks will come back. They'll come back to you, mom, if it weren't for you, if it weren't for my mom, that's when it'll come out in the speeches when they, when they do things, you know, they start doing that. <laughs> they start, you know, I want to thank my mom for, you know, it always <laughs> right. It always comes back to who, especially the boys especially the boys you are the first mom you are the first woman they will trust mm. you are the first woman female they will mm-hmm. trust yeah and they're going to gauge every female good or bad based on you <laughs> we based talked on- about the fun the fun the fun i might have down the road <laughs> oh girl Ooh, wait till the girlfriends start coming back. And the funny thing is you're, you're going to see yourself. <laughs> you're going to see yourself in a lot of these girls, you know, I'm a tomboy by nature. I mean, I, I we said that before in the last interview with the insomnia. Yes. Yes. I, I'm a tomboy, but that's just who I am. Like where I come from, women are tomboys, but you know, they're, they're very much women. They're just, you know, tomboyish. And I'm looking at the women that he's with and they're tomboys too. <laughs> This, you know, last night I was watching uh, the many scenes of Newark on HBO Max, and um, I was watching uh, Tony Soprano's mother is now young in the prequel, and she looks just like Edie Falco. And I'm like, did they do that on purpose? Because she, I was like, is that her? You know, now I'm Googling wow. it during the movie. I'm like, is that her? So it turns out it was actually, it was an accident. It wasn't even done intentionally, but you know, they went with it after the fact because it really showed like, was that some subliminal, like I found a, a woman just like my mother and you could see and you're like, wow, it's creepy. <laughs> but it's true. You hear it all the time. They say that a man, a man tends to, tends to go marry a woman just like his mother. Mm-hmm. And why is that? Why is that? Because they feel safe, right? And they feel Mm -hmm. loved. Or, I mean, but in some cases it's not because it's familiar, right? right? Because some men pick some crazy ass women that are not, that are just like their mom. (laughs) From too, where does that come to? Come from somewhere. You know, there's something in that where they saw something in their mom, you know, or I believe, I believe, I don't think it's all good necessarily, but I believe there's some element that we play in the the women that they choose. I do. (laughs) But a lot of times they, they marry you. A lot of times they, they marry their mom. You know, sometimes they, I'm they like, you'd be woman, lucky to marry a woman. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. You would be. Honestly, I'm like, good. She'll love you like I do. And she'll do everything you need her to do. And she'll work hard and kick ass. Yeah, good. You're lucky. And you should be that's, so lucky. <laughs> that's, that's right. We, we set the narrative for our culture. We as moms, we set the narrative for our culture. We're the ones unleashing the the, the promise keepers, the the boys, the men, the hard workers, the you know the bosses, the CEOs, you know uh, the presidents. You know, it's a woman who put that that into that man to be and do those things that he does. And then as he gets married, his wife, of course, you know. But it's a woman behind that. Behind every great man is a woman. We say that in the aspect of a husband and a wife. But guess what? A great man right. had a mother. At a mother or Thank a mother you. figure or whatever it might be. You know? Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. Let's yeah. take some, but let's also take some responsibility mm-hmm. and hold ourselves, if nobody else, hold ourselves accountable for what we're putting out there into society. Because a lot of the issues that are going on, I'm speaking from the black community again, a lot of the issues that are going on with men that are just downright disasters to women. I look at the underlining factor and the underlining factor is a woman. Yeah. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it's a woman. And I think it's really, you know, cause I am so, um, 
I'm so realistic when it comes to this because it's like, all right, I believe women are awesome, right? I believe women are equal. Uh, they yes. should be. If they're not, they uh, they should be. I believe in all that. But at the same time, I'm realistic. Like we can't we can't just say, oh, women. You know, to me, um, I don't I don't particularly celebrate National Women's Day whenever um, because to me, I'm like, if I want to be equal. I don't want any special, tr- I want to, I want to be equal, you know? And, and, and so when we look at, a, you know, I can want it, I can find the power in a woman, but also know that a woman makes mistakes and needs to be accountable, you know, like, Thank you. you know, and there's, you know, the, sometimes I, I don't say that because I'm like, but just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that I don't do any, all right. I'm just like, I'll let it go, but all right, but we gotta, exactly. you know, we're putting, men and women out there, you know, we are just popping out these babies and we've got to do something. So, and, and I see, I see a lot of us and I'm guilty of it. So trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm no saint. I'm not, again, I'm not, <laughs> but I see a lot of us, especially gen, gen, I'm gen X. A lot of us gen Xers are out here and we're looking at, you know, the gen Z's and millennials and we're like, you know, <laughs> where did they come from? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Who's the parents behind this? Why is nobody asking that question? Because <laughs> we're too busy doing this. Like, oh, they're so bad. Look what they're doing. Oh, mm-hmm. you crazy. Who's the parents? Yes. Oh, I like that. We are. Oh, my goodness. All right, Lori. So before I let you go, and you've given us such great insight, and you've really made me feel a lot better today. So I hope a lot of other moms out there are feeling better. But if you could leave us with... um one thing, leave us with something that you would say to a new mom of a son. I I learned something that changed my life and I hope that it changes yours. And it was a saying that was when a mother has a daughter, especially the first child, when a mother has a daughter, it's because she needed to learn maturity. Somewhere in her life, she needed to learn maturity. When a mother has a son, it's because she needed to learn unconditional love. And I know that that was the case for me. And no one will love you the way your son will love you. No one. No one. He, you can make all the mistakes in the world, but somewhere, especially as he maturates, he will begin to understand and just accept it as, that's my mom. Flaws and all, that's my mom mom so you don't have to be perfect none of us are none of us were you're going to make mistakes we're going we all hello queen of mistakes right here but in doing so remember that you have a responsibility to a human being who is going to go out into society and make a difference so the best that you can do is to be authentic with that human being that's the best you can do. Just be authentic. Age appropriate, but just be authentic with yourself and with your son. It's the most rewarding gift you can. And girls are great. I don't have a daughter. Girls are great. I'm sure if I had one, she would be obnoxious. She would have the bows, the, the ribbons, all of the above. Yeah I, yeah, I, yeah, I would be broke. But I thank God that I had a son because I've never experience that level of love i've never experienced so much fun mm. you, know, you know how boys are they play yeah. in the dirt i loved it i loved all of it but more importantly i love the person that he became we love our kids we love our kids regardless but not every parent can say they like their kids That's right and i like him i like the human being that he became and that comes just being authentic and be there. That's all you can do. That's all you're required to do. Mm. Just be authentic and be there. The rest will come. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you so much for being with me on a Sunday afternoon. I so appreciate it. I so appreciate having this conversation. I really do. Thank, Thank you, Nicole. You're so awesome. You're so cute. <laughs> You are. And I, I wish you all the best success. I think you're going to do phenomenally well. I think this is this is a great unheard of platform. I think I think this is necessary right now. 
uh, mm-hmm. especially a lot of parents that are homeschooling and just this whole weird, I, I feel sorry for you as parents today of young children, because you have the, the whole vaccination, don't vaccinate the mandatory, this, it just, it's crazy out there right now. Mm-hmm. And my hat goes off to you. And I just want to say from someone who's been there, you know, um, I, I think you guys are the real superheroes today. You know, we as parents, we had our we had our battles in our time, but like, I think you guys surpassed any generation of parent. I, I think you do like it, just the, the level of courageousness that it takes just to still show up. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I can't, I I can't. If my son were grown up in this, I, I would literally be a hermit. I would be a hermit. <laughs> we, we would not go outside. He would he wouldn't even know what human beings were. Right. <laughs> He wouldn't even think we were the only ones here. Like he, I, 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 I don't, I couldn't do it. I could not do what what it is that you guys have to do now as as mothers, as parents, as mothers, especially as parents today. I, I, I couldn't do it, and I commend my hats off to all of you. I, I commend each and every one of you. You know, but you're not alone. You know, and take advice, take advice from some strong women that you trust. You know, my my, I, I'm a phone call away, Nicolette. You know that. So, you know, I I don't have all the answers, but I've been there. <laughs> I've never been there. Else, I could sit there and pat on the back with you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. Now, on that note of mothering, I'm going to go, you know, nourish my child and keep him alive another day. Right? That's the job. That's my goal. <laughs> thank you, Lori. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye.